I'd like to welcome our special guests, Renee Murphy, Principal Analyst for Security and Risk at Forrester, and Ben McCormick, Vice President of Operations at Evernote. Renee, can you tell us a little bit about your work at Forrester on security in the enterprise and how cloud figures into that? Yeah, so I work at Forrester as a principal analyst in governance, risk, and compliance. So I work with um, chief information security officers on the risk question about the cloud. And from a security perspective, I'll say that that's usually the very first question they have. How secure is the cloud? Are they going to be responsible for, you know, my problems? Mm -hmm. The first thing you can try to do is tell them, you know, listen, you know, take any cloud best practice, go into your own data center and see if you'll pass that. And they'll come back and tell me, there's no way we can do this. I'm like, right, well then. Not much left to talk about. Right, <laughs> it's like someone else can do it better. You might want to do it. So I think that's how they, they first come to the question. Like, it, I'm, what am I really giving up? And I say, you're not giving up anything except, you know, the spinning disk in your space. That's all you're giving up. You're actually enhancing your security. You're enhancing your availability. What makes cloud more effective is you have the, you can hire people I can't hire. You can have, you know, huge data centers that Me I can Me being all have. of Google. All of Google. Okay. Um, you can do that, right? right. I, you can do it in a way I can't. And listen, the more of us that go to the cloud, the better you're going to get at it. And the better you get at it, um, the better I'm going to be at it. And I think at the end of the day, um, you know, if you're in the business of doing anything other than managing data centers, then why are you managing the data center? Ben, let me bring you in. Last year, you did migrate your data centers over to Google Cloud. Tell us a little bit about that experience. Does the security side of that mirror what Renee is talking about, or did you have other interests and concerns? Um, I, I'd say broadly, yes. Um, for us, it was about um, allowing our teams to focus on what was important to our end customers. We've got hundreds of millions of users who we are helping collect information, retrieve information, and help them be more efficient. Being an expert in running a physical data center doesn't directly support that. So for us, it was about allowing our technical teams, and you're right, you, you move to cloud, you do not get rid of your technical team. Nope. Or if you do, you're going to realize it's a mistake really quickly. Yeah. There, there, are, there are things you're doing in the physical data center that will be re replaced in the cloud. You need to become an expert at the clouds, the cloud providers control plane, et cetera, et cetera. But for us, it was about focusing our company and our staff on things that were important to our users um, and also allowing our development teams and software engineers to move a lot faster. Um, so for us, the rate of change and the rate of innovation in the cloud space is way faster than we can mm. ever achieve. That's the proposition in cloud that it automates a lot of the cruft work. You don't pull cable anymore. You don't destroy hard drive anymore. You, know, you, you outsource all that to another provider in a large centralized area, and developers can move faster. Yep. They have better tools, they can scale. Ultimately, security questions are about having your business relationships threatened, and you must have had security questions going in. What were they like and how were they best addressed? So for us, I think there were, it was twofold. We initially started with our standard security questionnaires, um, and we went through those, and then what our security team actually did was paused a couple of months in and actually started risk modeling or threat modeling what were the risks that were we looking at right. in cloud. The risk model is not, is the cloud provider, provider going to lose a hard drive? The risk model is what happens if you lose your, effectively your root password in the cloud account, in your cloud account. So we, we went through our standard process first, mm -hmm. we learned from that in the first cycle, and then we updated our threat modeling and then re-asked the questions to Google and re-engaged. And I think the other thing, we just went through a period of learning that you have to, to go to cloud means you've got to trust somebody. Is there a, some kind of corollary where security is concerned? Are the security teams working in different ways on more valuable stuff? It's broadly exactly the same. So the security team and the, the legal teams have still got to um, verify all of the certifications with the provider. You've got to go through the security certifications, the questionnaires. None of that changes, but what the security team is not having to do is audit, we use this example, physical hard drive destruction. They're not having to audit physical hard drive destruction logs every quarter. And for us, the question becomes, if they're not doing that, what can they be spending their time on? They can spend more time on securing the application, more time helping our developers write more secure code, and more time chasing people that are trying to hack our application, not trying to hack our physical data centers. 
So for us, it, I think in the security side as well, it allows them to move up the stack um, and focus on things that are more important to our customers. And ultimately, that, that's what it's about. It's about your customers. Um, it's not about the uh, running physical data centers. And or, you're that's how we team, saw it. You're offering your team more interesting and challenging work. It is a new landscape. What do you wish you'd known beforehand? Um, about security specifically? For us, there, there hasn't really been. There's, no been. there's been no big surprises on the security side. We, we did all of our due diligence up front. Our security team and our legal team spent a lot of time with the Google teams, understanding the nuances of cloud, what did it provide, what didn't it provide. The big surprise for us has been how quickly our software engineers embrace the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, and in some ways, we're having to play catch up. It's interesting you say this because you're telling me that you know, the IT team stay in place, security stays in place, they're involved in different work, so there's some change management involved, and you see a competitive differentiator for the enterprise in going to cloud. What was that about? I think you've got to look at the macro picture. We're losing the battle. Um, breaches are getting larger and larger. Um, threat actors are getting more and more sophisticated, and as an industry, I'm not sure we're actually winning that battle. Um, but if you can focus less on some of the security layers and allow your cloud provider who has scale, who can apply automation, who can apply, we hope in the future, machine learning to some of those things, it frees up security professionals to focus on our application security. And I think it's one of the ways that we may start stemming the tide of losing the battle against, uh, against hacks. And Renee, you speak to many businesses. How does security figure in for most of them as becoming some sort of competitive differentiator? What we're trying to manage, businesses when they talk to me, they're trying to manage reputational risk, right? Um, and so what do you end up with after a breach? You have damaged reputation, right? And so everybody's trying to control that. And actually, it's how they get funding these days. We don't talk about threat and vulnerabilities anymore. We talk about the impact of the to the business it's reputation. Like, what, are we going to be labeled you know, another company who can't seem to keep their data together, right? Will there be a massive fine? Well, and will there be a massive fine? Yeah, that's not even funny anymore. So, um, you know, we can't ignore it. So I think from a differentiator perspective that if you are spending your time, like Ben said, working on other things, securing your application, you know, making better code, having security deployed somewhere else so that they can be meaningful, I think that's all part of being, you know, a, a differentiator, a competitive differentiator. And of course, you know, the customers are also thinking, how's this going to change my life? And so for a security engineer, when you talk about cloud security and, you know, how pervasive or full stack or, you know, depth of hardware, software, security integration, whatever, what are they thinking about what they're going to do next if that part of their job goes away. Yeah, see, that's it. We spend a lot of time um, telling them, we need to figure out a way to get you out of the day-to-day -day stuff of security, looking at patching, you know, looking at incidences, um, trying to figure out if the threat and vulnerability management system is giving us false positives. So for me, it's all about um, managing that third party, having a partnership, understanding who's responsible for what, negotiating that ahead of time, right? In a breach, who notifies who of what? In a security incident, how is how are we going to communicate that? Because you may be communicating to me, but I need to communicate to an entire organization. So we need to be in sync with that. We need to negotiate change management. We need to negotiate incident management. If I'm in a heavily regulated industry and you're making infrastructure changes, mm -hmm. I have to know. So transparency is available. Exploit it. Use yes, it as much as you can. Absolutely do it. And if you're in a heavily regulated industry, have one conversation with the regulators before um, you go down this road to understand their expectations. And if you have internal audit, have them involved. The landscape has changed. Um, and I think the next generation of IT professionals, security professionals, um, need to be cloud ready. They need to be less thinking about how do I secure a router um, and more thinking about how do I secure my cloud account, how do I secure my keys, um, and continue on that journey. So I think it's a journey up the stack for all of us. Um, when I started in the industry, we, we used to argue about what physical network card to put in a server. <laughs> We did. It was an argument. It took you a month of time yep. to discuss what version of card you would put in. Um, we're constantly moving up the stack, and it's, it's only going to continue, and it's going to move faster and faster. And Ben, what do you see your IaaS security teams working on a year or two from now? So what we're trying to assess is how far can we go down the route of serverless architectures, um, not worrying about infrastructure, continuing to abstract further and further away from the underlying infrastructure. We're not sure it's quite there yet, 
but we know it's coming very, very quickly. We want to be ready to embrace a that. A more integrated and automated stack, basically. Basically, yeah, embracing things like cloud functions um, and embracing those higher value services. Like Renee said it, like why worry about securing the container? Worry about securing the code. Worry about writing secure code. So for us, it's a, it's a continual abstraction. It's never going to stop and it's only going to get faster. What does the future hold for security? What do you see happening next? What do you think businesses should be thinking about? Well, I think businesses should be thinking about um, getting comfortable with the idea that you don't need to manage this yourself. I think we should see this as fully outsourced um, from a security perspective between the managed security service providers or cloud providers. I think we should, we as organizations should get out of that business. We shouldn't be in the business of securing data. We should have companies that are very good at securing data. We should share that risk with them, right? We should do that because you hired all the best people that I can't afford, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? You hired all the best people She's that I can't afford, so I may as well have you manage that for me. Right. And listen, if I'm in the business of doing research, should I be in the business of you know, running a data center? Again, no, mm -hmm. no, I mm -hmm. shouldn't be, right? Other people are better at it. Talk to the provider, get a roadmap for yeah. what's gonna get automated next and think about the value added security layer you might put on top of that. It's great advice.